Hey everybody, it's Dr. Lisa Schwartz with the Breast Cancer Straight Talk group. And today I wanted to answer a question from Barb. She was asking about lymphedema and how you can reduce your risk. So uh, I wanted to jump in here because this is going to be a common problem amongst uh, breast cancer patients. Um, any of you that have had invasive breast cancer have had your lymph nodes either sampled or dissected. So first of all, let's talk about what lymph nodes are and what lymph flow means. So lymph is a clear fluid that runs throughout your body in lymphatic vessels and it clears away the debris in your body, dead cells, dead bacteria, things like that. And it runs to the lymph nodes. So for example, in breast cancer, you may get cancer cells that get into the lymph vessels and the first place they go is to the lymph nodes underneath your arm, which is why we check them in invasive breast cancer. So if you have damage to the lymph nodes, either removing them or damaging the tissue around the lymph nodes so that you're damaging some of the lymph vessels, then the lymph fluid can back up and usually in breast cancer, we see this in the arm and in the hand because the fluid is backed up into the arm. So that's what lymphedema is. Now, what are the risk factors for developing lymphedema? Well, first of all, the more lymph nodes you have removed, the greater your risk for developing lymphedema. So for example, if you've only had a sentinel lymph node biopsy, you know you only have a few lymph nodes removed when you have a sentinel lymph node biopsy and your risk is somewhere between 5 and 17 percent. And that's a, a, a conglomerate of a bunch of different trials that have looked at this. Um, as we've gotten better at sentinel lymph node biopsies, the risk is probably down closer to the 5 percent range. But there are other things about your body makeup that may put you at higher risk for having um, lymphedema. So first of all, sentinel lymph node biopsy it does have a risk, but it's lower than if you have a full axillary lymph node dissection. And you know if you have a full dissection, you get many, many lymph nodes removed, usually 20 or so. And your risk then for developing lymphedema is somewhere between 20 and 50 percent. So it's significantly higher with an axillary lymph node dissection. Also what increases your risk is having either multiple surgeries or more complex surgery. So if you've had a mastectomy, you're at an increased risk as compared to if you've had a lumpectomy because it's a, um, that surgery is more extensive and does more damage to the tissues. Another risk factor is to have radiation. Now whole breast radiation where you're just getting the lower level of lymph nodes increases your risk only slightly but if you have to add radiation to the lymph nodes where they're adding a special field to treat the lymph nodes underneath the arm and usually right above the collarbone, which are the supraclavicular lymph nodes, then you're getting more damage to the lymphatic vessels in that area. And that definitely increases your risk for developing lymphedema. Chemotherapy, we don't really know if chemo itself increases your risk. But certainly, chemotherapy leads to weight gain in a lot of women with breast cancer, and weight gain is definitely a risk factor for developing lymphedema. Another thing that could happen is, and when you have your surgery, they will warn you not to have your blood pressure taken in that arm, not to have needle sticks in that arm, not to have your blood drawn, not to get shots in that arm. And the reason is, is that any injury to that arm or any infection in that arm can then bring on lymphedema. So you want to avoid that. Now there's some um, controversy over how much uh, plane travel, flying in an airplane, affects your risk for lymphedema. If you're at low risk for lymphedema in the first place, flying in a plane may not necessarily increase your risk at all. But if you're at slightly higher risk, it can't hurt to put on a compression sleeve when you fly. And um, this will be something that can be recommended to you by a physical therapist who specializes in lymphedema treatment. Which brings us to the next session on what can you do to reduce your risk knowing what the risk factors are. And so the first thing is, is that if you can see 
a lymphedema physical therapist before your surgery, that's ideal. And usually they'll, get, they'll take measurements of both arms so that they know as soon as the slightest amount of swelling develops. Another thing they'll do is give you some very specific stretching exercises to do that start about a week after your surgery. And these stretching exercises do a couple of things. Number one, they help to prevent the lymphedema, but secondly, they also help to improve your range of motion in the shoulder. And many of you who have had surgery on the arm know that you can develop even a frozen shoulder after surgery. So these exercises help to prevent that. The other thing that you need to do to reduce your risk is to do anything to prevent an infection in your arm. So if you get a cut in that, in their fingers or anywhere on the arm, be sure to treat it aggressively with um, antibacterial um, neosporin or the first sign of infection, you need to tell your doctor so you can get on some antibiotics, but you need to be very diligent about that. And avoid cuts if you can. If you work in the garden, be sure to wear gloves, things like that. The other thing you need to avoid is extreme overuse of that arm. So really heavy lifting, um, having the arm compressed, or having the arm exposed to extreme temperatures, any of those things can damage the lymphatic vessels in the arm and lead to lymphedema. You can do gentle strengthening exercises of the upper extremities, and I would have a physical therapist direct you in that. Um, but there have been studies that shown that gentle weightlifting is okay. We used to tell women not to lift anything heavier than a phone book. Well, not only do we not have phone books today, but we actually have found out that you don't really need to limit your exercise to the upper extremities by that extreme, okay? And then the last thing you can do to reduce your risk is that if you need to lose weight, do so. Because being overweight can increase your risk for developing lymphedema. And that risk of developing lymphedema can happen at any point after your treatment. So what we talked about just now is what is lymphedema, a swelling that occurs because of damage to the lymphatic vessels and the lymph nodes under the arm that's often a consequence of breast cancer treatment. The risk factors are having more lymph nodes re removed increases your risk Having multiple surgeries or more extensive surgeries increases your risk. Radiation to the lymph nodes can increase your risk. And uh, weight gain, whether or not it's associated with chemotherapy, can increase your risk. Affection, infection or injury in that arm also increases your risk. So what can you do to reduce your risk is see a physical therapist who specializes in lymphedema treatment have your arms measured before surgery, if at all possible, so you can detect swelling as soon as it occurs, even if it's just a little bit. Um, the physical therapist should give you some stretches and gentle exercises to do right after surgery. Avoid extreme overuse, hot and cold temperatures, or excessive pressure in that arm, and do everything you can to prevent cuts and infection in that arm, um, and lose weight if you need to. So that's a summary of lymphedema, its risk factors, and what you can do to prevent it. I hope that's been helpful. And um, please, if you are not already a member of the Breast Cancer Straight Talk group, feel free to join us. Uh, the month of Octo October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and things are really happening in the group, and you'll get a lot of your questions answered. So please come join us there. Thanks.